Hey everyone, welcome to Loomis. Last chapter, we discussed consumer theory. And now this chapter, we're going to take a look at firms. First, what is a firm? A firm is a commercial enterprise that uses inputs such as labor, capital, and materials to produce outputs, which we call goods and services. Think about how apple juice is made. First, we need farms that use labor and apple seeds to grow these apples. Then, manufacturing factories will use apples to make apple concentrate. Then, bottling companies use apple concentrate and glass bottles to finally make apple juice that we can buy at the supermarkets. So all of these processes involve firms taking inputs and creating some type of outputs. Next, let's take a look at a few terms that you need to be familiar with when talking about firms. Revenue is the amount of money that a firm receives from selling its goods and services. For example, a coffee shop generates revenue when it sells coffee. We calculate revenue with this equation. Revenue is equal to price times quantity. For example, if the coffee shop sold 100 cups of coffee for $5 each, then we calculate revenue as $5 times 100 is equal to 500. So that's revenue, which is what a firm receives. Now let's talk about costs. Costs are the amount of money that a firm pays for its inputs. For example, a coffee shop has costs from buying the coffee beans and also hiring employees to actually make the coffee. With revenue and costs, we can calculate profit. Profit is the leftover revenue that we have after subtracting our costs. We found that the coffee shop has $500 of revenue. If we also know that they have $300 in costs, then we can calculate their profit as $500 minus $300 equals 200. So we say that the coffee shop generated profits of $200. Just like the concept of marginal benefit and marginal cost when we're talking about consumers, firms not only need to consider their total revenue and total cost, but also their marginal revenue and marginal cost. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue that a firm will receive from producing one more unit. Mathematically, we say that marginal revenue is equal to the change in revenue over the change in quantity. For example, the next cup of coffee that a coffee shop sells might give them an additional $5. So the change in revenue is $5 and the change in quantity is 1. So the marginal revenue we calculate here is going to be $5. Marginal cost, on the other hand, is the additional cost that a firm incurs from producing one more unit. Mathematically, it's going to be the change in cost over the change in quantity. So for example, if the next cup of coffee that a coffee shop sells will cost them $3 to make, then the marginal cost here is going to be $3. Now, we need to know that different firms will have different strategies. Some want to maximize their revenue because they don't really care about costs or profits. A lot of technology companies will have this growth-minded mindset. Other firms want to minimize their costs. So usually large corporations that have already maxed out their growth potential will start cutting on their costs. However, in economics, we assume that the goal of a rational firm is to maximize their profits. To maximize profits, you need to remember the profit maximization rule, which says that profit is maximized when the next unit produced gives marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, so MR equal to MC. The rationale here is that if marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, then making one more unit can increase your profits. If the next cup of coffee that you sell can be sold for $5 and it only costs $3 to make, then you should make it and you should sell that next cup of coffee to increase your profits. However, if the marginal revenue is less than the marginal cost, then not making that next cup of coffee will actually increase your profits. If the next cup of coffee can be sold for $5, but it costs $10 to make, then you should not make it. In fact, you should decrease your production instead. Only when marginal revenue exactly equals marginal cost are you indifferent about producing more or less. For example, if your next cup of coffee can be sold for $5 and it costs $5 to make, then you're really indifferent here about whether to produce or not. So you know that you have reached profit maximization. 
Another concept to review here is the idea of opportunity cost. Usually when people talk about cost, they're talking about accounting costs, which are the explicit costs for a firm. These refer to the amount of money that firms actually pay out of their pocket for their production inputs. So for example, the price that we pay for coffee beans that we use in our coffee shop is going to be accounting costs. However, in economics, we're concerned with the economic costs, which are the explicit and implicit costs for the firm added together. These together refer to the opportunity costs for the factors of production. For example, when we're calculating the costs of our coffee beans, we not only include what we paid for them, which is the explicit cost, but also the opportunity costs of what else they could have been used for. For example, instead of selling the coffee, we could have sold chocolate covered coffee beans. So we need to include what we could have earned from that when calculating our economic costs. By understanding the difference between accounting costs and economic costs, we can now calculate accounting profit and economic profit. Accounting profit is the increase in money in a, in a firm's bank accounts after operations. Mathematically, this will be revenue minus accounting costs. So for example, if our coffee shop made $500 from selling coffee this month, and we also have $300 in accounting costs, such as from buying coffee beans and paying for our employees, then there will be $200 of accounting profit left over. On the other hand, economic profits deals with how much more the firm made with its resources than it could have made elsewhere. For, so for example, what else could we have done this month with our re resources, such as our time and energy, instead of running this coffee shop? Let's say that we could have made $150 doing something else. So we have an implicit cost of 150. So plus our explicit cost of $300 that we talked about earlier, this will be a total of $450 of economic cost. Now we have to subtract all these economic costs from our revenue of 500. And this leaves us with only $50 in economic profits left over. A special level of economic profit is when there is zero economic profit which we call normal profits. Normal profits is the amount of profit that exactly compensates the opportunity cost of a firm's resources. If we say that our coffee shop makes zero economic profits, or we make normal profits, what we really mean is that we are making just as much as we could have doing something else. So if we made $150 in accounting profit, but we could have also made $150 doing something else, let's say, we could have opened up an ice cream store, then our economic profit here will be zero. So we say that we're making normal profits. So today, we learned a few different things that firms need to think about. We learned about profit, which is revenue minus cost, and we also learned that firms maximize their profits by equating their marginal revenue and marginal costs. And lastly, we learned that firms need to consider their opportunity costs by looking at their economic profits. Now that we have a better understanding of some of the economic concepts that firms have to consider, we can start looking at firm production decisions in the short and long run next.